I hope you guys don't mind the audio. I'm still in the midst of trying to buy a new mic. So if you hear anything outside or anything like that, please cut me some slack. I don't have much to work with at the moment. I actually wrote down the things that I want to talk about. So if you hear paper, yeah, I, I wrote everything down. I'm being transparent with you guys here. <laughs> and I still, for whatever reason, forget to look at the viewfinder. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a bit different from my previous videos. As you can see from the title, last year I turned 30 and in about a month I'll be turning 31. I thought it would be fun to share with you guys 30 things that I learned after I turned 30. I'm a bit late to the party on this, but hey, you know, I'm here now. Turning 30 was a big milestone for me. And I wanted to take some time to reflect on what I've learned so far. Hopefully someone comes across this video and hopefully gains some insight. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I, I have a list. I actually had to sit down and really think about the things that I learned up until this point in my life. So I'm just gonna go through this list that I put together and <laughs> I'm just gonna read through this list that I put together and hopefully it helps you guys, let's start. I'm sure you've heard this in other videos but I feel like it is so important to say so initially I had this thought process of if my 20 year old self were to walk through that door right now and was to sit down in front of me and ask me what all have I learned? What would I tell her? The first thing I learned after turning 30 was that it's okay to not have everything figured out. In my 20s, I felt like I needed to have my whole life planned out. But now I realize that life is unpredictable and that's okay. But that's just the very first thing I wanted to just say right off gate. It's not even on the list, but it popped up in my head and I realized that if I had heard that sooner, <laughs> this is what I tell her. <laughs> Number one, put your needs first. It's okay to say no, they will live. I have spent a good amount of my life putting the needs of others before my own. You know, it's not worth it if at the end of the day, my energy is drained. So just learn, it's okay to say no. They're not going, the world's not going to end. You're not going to die, you know, and speak your truth. It's okay to tell somebody, no, I don't wanna hang out right now. I don't wanna do this. And if those people are really, you know, good people and they're good for you, they'll understand. And if they don't, maybe you need to reevaluate the relationship that you have with this particular person and if it's good to have them in your life. Number two, things will never be perfect. So release control. I get stuck with so much analysis paralysis, it's nuts. I would spend hours on something small <laughs> because I just, it needed to be absolutely perfect. And you know, on some levels, I am still learning through this, you know, but I feel like I have a better idea to just sit back and kind of confront those feelings, confront those emotions, and then let it go and, and leave it to the universe. Number three, follow your gut. I can't tell you how many times I've had that gut feeling or my intuition was kicking off and I didn't listen to it. I think it's either I was in denial uh, and I wanted to, to push forward because I really wanted that particular outcome. So I chose to ignore that feeling in my gut. Or, you know, I didn't want to disappoint this person or make them sad. So despite my better judgment, because I didn't want to let this person down or make this person unhappy, I chose to not listen to what my body, my inner voice was telling me. And because of that, each time I always ended up unhappy. Follow your intuition, follow your gut, listen to your body's reaction. Number four, 
Relationships are hard work and are nothing like what you see on TV. <laughs> This just needs a whole video in of itself, but it's true though. Relationships can be beautiful, but they can also get really ugly really quickly. My husband doesn't like it when I say this, but relationships are hard work. Never has been there more truth to the saying, you don't know someone until you live with them. You're having to learn not only the good things about that significant other, but you're also learning the bad. I don't really want to call them bad. It's just, you might see flaws or, or little quirks that you just aren't for. <laughs> there's a lot of give, there's a lot of take, there's a lot of sacrifice, there's a lot of compromise, and it, it takes two people that don't don't go off of what you see on TV, don't go off of what you see on these dramas, don't go off of what you see on social media, on YouTube, because you don't see everything behind the scenes and I guarantee you that it's not perfect all the time and that it, there's some rough patches and you're gonna go through rough patches. Don't, okay, so here is number five. Don't rely on others or wait for a miracle to get what you want. I spent a lot of my younger years relying on others. Um, not, so, not necessarily wanting them to, to take care of me or to do things for me, but it's almost as if I, instead of taking action myself, I would simply sit back and wait for someone else to take that action in the hopes that it would inspire me to take action as well. Does that make sense? I would wait and I don't know why I did this. I look back and I'm like, why, why did you wait on that? Just, you could have just done it. <laughs> Girl, if you don't get up off your butt. If I had the initiative and the drive and I, at least the thought process that I have now, uh, yeah, things would have panned out a whole lot differently, but you know, it's better not to dwell on the past. Don't dwell on that. Just know that you're here now and what are you going to do now? And yeah, I'm working on that as we speak. Number six, what is delayed is never denied. This quote, this beautiful quote, I actually heard recently. Uh, from a great, amazing, magnificent YouTuber. Uh, I'll link her uh, YouTube channel down below, but her name is Fumi. I can't say her whole name. Please forgive me, Fumi. Please forgive me. If you're at a point in your life where things aren't going the way you want it to, or you, you haven't achieved a certain milestone, it doesn't mean that it's not for you or that you're being denied of that milestone. It just means that it's not time yet. It's not time. And I know that's hard to hear because it definitely was hard for me to hear at first as well. But when you really think about it, I'm at a point in my life where I'm able to work on me. I have a better mindset than I had 10 years ago. May even, hell, even three years ago, I had a different mindset. A year ago, I had a different mindset than what I do now. And, you know, and I feel like the pawns are just being set. But uh, yeah, check her out. I'll have a link to her her YouTube channel and the specific video that I watched all, all in the description below. Number seven, you don't have a lot of friends and that is absolutely okay. I grew up thinking that if I didn't have a lot of friends that there must be something wrong with me. And so I did things like I, I tried to push myself to mingle, I tried to make friends with people and to connect, and I just, I couldn't connect. The amount of friends you have does not define your self-worth at all. Like I can count all my close best friends on one hand, and that's fine. <laughs> I say the less people the better, you don't have to deal with all that drama, you don't have to deal with he says she said crap. Like, I'm not a very, I'm not all for drama, y'all. I don't like conflict. I learned over time that this is me. This is who I am. I just, I'm not the kind of person to deal with a lot of people. And that's okay. Number eight, cherish your family and the time you spend with them. I learned this not through my parents, but through my grandparents. My grandparents, I didn't really spend a lot of time talking with them. And I wish I had. I, the conversations I would have with them now, the questions I would ask, 
but I can't, it's too late now. I'm a very future focused person. So when I have my eyes on something, it's just like I, I, I only have my eyes on that one thing and I'm always in my head. Once I achieve a goal, I don't even take the time out to, to celebrate that win. I'm already thinking about, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next goal I need to get? Thank God for my husband because he's the complete opposite of me. He's definitely the kind of person that is able to live in the moment and he is able to pull me back sometimes and go, hey, chill, <laughs> sit down, relax, like look around you. And then there are moments when I do that and I look around and I go, huh, I didn't even notice that before. And it feels great to have a breather every once in a while. So I, I would definitely say is cherish the family you have. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. You know, call your mom, call your dad, you know, <laughs> enjoy life, you know, and don't get so caught up in, in the goals. You know, I'm not saying don't stop. Um, don't stop. But don't get so caught up in it that you, you lose opportunities in other areas of your life. Number nine, network and reach out to mentors. <laughs> I had no idea how powerful LinkedIn was, okay? I'm not saying that LinkedIn is the only option you have, but I, I've learned that you can find a lot of people who you can reach out to, a lot of professionals, a lot of mentors. You could learn a lot from them and, and they're open to talking to you. You just gotta reach out to them. It's so important to have those kind of people in your corners. Number 10, be open to receiving advice. I didn't really have this problem too much, but I know that at some point when I felt strongly about something, I had a hard time listening to others. It's not so much you have to change anything about yourself when someone gives you advice, but just be open to what they have to say and, and, and be open-minded about it, you know? Who knows, that advice may help you at some point in your life. Number 11, you don't need to have it all together. Take this time to explore your interests and who you are. I've come to learn that when you're in your 20s, that is a, a era of learning. I see, you know, the 20s as an area in someone's life in which they need to explore who they are and the kind of person they want to be. Life is full of exploration and we're constantly evolving and, and shifting as beings. Explore and gravitate towards things that resonate with you. All right, next. Number 12, for every person who rejects you, there are twice as many that loves and accepts you for who you are. I had a hard time with this growing up in school. Um, there are moments where I've had people tell me, I don't like you. And whenever I asked why, it would be, I just don't like you. And that would just, would eat away at me night and day. And I'd find myself constantly wondering, why don't they like me? I, I don't know what I did wrong. What did I do wrong? Did I say something? Was it something I said? Was it something I did? But I don't say anything to anybody. Like, I don't I don't understand. Even as I got into college, it was just this idea of, do they like me? I want them to like me. It would get to the point to where I would do and say things that I know wasn't authentic to me around my 30s that I just learned, you know, I don't care if you don't like me. <laughs> I don't care. I have all these other people in my corner who know who I am, they know how I operate, and they love me just the same. And you know what? That's fine. That is all I need. If you do like me and we click, hey, let's, even better. But if not, okay, all right then. That took some time. It took some time to get there. And, and so I don't expect for anyone to just shift this mindset overnight. Number 13, therapy is a blessing. Do it. So there's a point when I was in college, I was struggling mentally. And I was given an opportunity to see a therapist on campus and I'll never forget it. I made my way down the steps. I had her card in my hand that one of the teachers had recommended her to me. And I made my way down the hallway. I got to her door and then I turned around and I ran. <laughs> and it's because I grew up, you know, with this idea of what therapy meant in our head. Thank God for today. Today, in today's age, you know, therapy is so widely accepted, but 
you know, growing up, even, at, you know, back then, it just, it, it was seen as if you're going to therapy that there's something wrong with you. I believe I ran away not because I thought I had this mindset of, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. I knew that I, I had a lot I was dealing with. But I think it was the idea of what other people would think if they saw me going to this lady. I really wish I had, you know, fought past that negative thought. I really wish I had opened that door. So if you're in that sort of situation where you're kind of unsure on whether or not to do therapy or not, and if you can afford it, do it, do it. I, later on in life, I did have therapy, I did counseling, and it was one of the best moves I ever made. And <laughs> it, it definitely changed my perception on life, my perception of myself, of others, do it. That's all I have to say.